Multiple young people surround an Asian man. They strike him in his head and he falls to the ground. China is lying to us to actively hurt us, actively kill our people and people in many other countries. But China, it would seem, is actively trying to hurt us. And China is lying so they can come out on top. They want us to be hurt, not just the United States, but Australia and countries in Europe as well. We have to stop trusting them. China is responsible for starting it and lying about it so we couldn't respond properly. It's China that's caused this problem, not Donald Trump. The real adversary here is China. They are actively trying to hurt us still and covered this up. I would say they're actively trying to kill us. They're trying to actively hurt us. China is trying to kill us and many others. China, 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 China. This is propaganda. I'm Nathan Rich, aka Pool War Dawa. Today I'm continuing the debunking of Tim Pool's ridiculous conspiracy theory that's blaming everything it can on China. In the last part, I showed you how Tim Pool is spreading lies and misinformation, not bothering to do much research or even click the links that he's referencing. Now we're going to get into the meat of what his conspiracy theory is actually made up of. He begins by talking about an awkward conversation between an interviewer and a WHO official. I'm not going to get into the full politics of China and Taiwan. Okay, let's just be honest here, Tim. You're not going to get into the full politics of China and Taiwan because you don't understand them. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. And if so, I would love to see your video outlining major important differences between the three branches of the Kuomintang. Or how about the three principles of Sun Yat-sen and how the third one was actually more like a proto-socialism. I'm sure you're vastly familiar with that. Or how about the blue shirts and the fascist regime that was called the ROC that moved down to Taiwan in what was at the time the longest martial law ever in human history, suppressing, torturing, and killing any political adversaries. I'm sure you're just wildly familiar with that, Tim. I guess you just don't want to get into it right now. He was asked whether the organization would consider Taiwan's membership. When she asked again, the doctor hung up. Well, Tim, I guess I do have to help you out here a little bit. I mean, I'm sure you already know all this, but the WHO is part of the UN, the United Nations. Taiwan is not a nation. This question is obviously politically motivated, and the WHO is not a political organization. This is a sign that this individual was trying very hard not to displease. Wait, wait, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say they didn't want to displease Taiwan, right? Because if the WHO declares Taiwan's not a country, which it isn't, then you're going to get a lot of Taiwanese separatists who are going to attack the WHO. Now, why would they do that, Tim? It's not their job to do that. I mean, I assume that's what you're going to say, right? Displease China. What? China would not be displeased if the WHO told the truth about Taiwan, which is, you may think you're a country, you may say you're a nation, but you aren't. Taiwan is not a country. Taiwan is not a nation. It is not a sovereign state. And that's not my opinion. That's just a fact. It doesn't mean anything bad about Taiwanese people. It just means that that's not what they are. And you know what's going to happen to me for saying that, Tim? A lot of angry people are going to try to vandalize my sites and leave all these angry comments and report my videos and dislike and do whatever they can to try to disrupt my message. But unlike the WHO and the UN, I don't care. They are supposed to care, Tim, because they are not involved in deciding or declaring that Taiwan is or isn't or should or shouldn't be this or that. What they're concerned about is health. This shows the World Health Organization is carrying water for China to, to a certain degree. No, this shows that the WHO doesn't want to get involved in a long and painful and pointless political argument. You see, Tim, and what I'm going to say now will be unpopular both with the CCP and with separatists in Taiwan and probably with Americans, too. I don't care, though, Tim. China is in a civil war. The war never ended. They just stopped fighting. And the best option for everyone involved now is a peaceful unification. Nobody wants to go to war. Mainland China doesn't want that. Taiwan doesn't want that. The U.S. doesn't want that. And so even bringing this up is very taboo. Taiwan is part of China, and there is one internationally recognized government of China. And that government is called the People's Republic of China. All of the land of China 
legally belongs to them. Separatists in a part of a country doesn't make a new country. In order for that to happen, Tim, there would have to be an actual treaty signed or the war would have to be over, which I'm sorry to say, and I know this is very offensive to people, the war isn't over. They're in a cold war now and nobody wants that to go to a hot war. But the point is, Tim, the WHO and the UN know that if they start meddling in China's affairs and start prodding and poking at this side or that side, it is not going to end well. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, Tim, but we do know that it's not the place of the World Health Organization to decide. Like I said, this is not a popular view, but as far as I can tell, this is the actual truth of the situation. And we see the lies or the misinformation coming out of the World Health Organization. This caused the problem we're facing now. If they had warned us, we could have reacted more quickly. The lies, they said the preliminary investigation did not find clear evidence of transmission. You could certainly say that they should have found it earlier, Tim, but you've offered us no proof that they did find it earlier. And this is the thing missing from your little conspiracy theory here is proof. Even if we believe the blog posts with no audio or video sources that claims that they talked to a lady who claims that back on the 25th, someone told her that a doctor was infected. Even if that were true, that still doesn't prove the next step, which is that the government knew about it. And until that proof arrives, Tim, you're spreading lies. You are spreading lies. China is seeking to build its economic power during the pandemic with predatory offers of help to countries around the world. And here you seem to think that the use of the word predatory here means they're trying to kill people, which isn't the case. They're saying that China's trying to exploit the situation. Don't you think that trying to help other countries is a good thing? Are you saying that they should be giving these things away for free? Or like, I don't even know what you're talking about here. Can you imagine how worse off we would be if China just actually to like, I don't know, the United States this entire time. I mean, the United States during this time has increased sanctions, has started a regime change and has taken supplies out of Italy. Just imagine if China were doing that. I mean, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Spain returns faulty testing kits bought from Chinese company as experts say China is filling the void left by Europe's usual go-to ally, the US. Why isn't the US helping anyone, Tim? To me, this sounds like people are just jealous that China's actually trying to to do something effectively or not, while the US is for the first time in a very long time, not even pretending to try to help anyone. Or it could be that China is sending out faulty medical supplies because they're trying to actively hurt us. I'm going to make the assumption that's the case. Really? You're just going to assume the most complicated answer possible with no clear motivations in this big grand conspiracy rather than the simpler one with strong precedence that doesn't require this grand conspiracy? Why? And then he just goes on about how countries have returned products to China. And for some reason, he doesn't mention how China's launched investigations into these companies, including, for example, the one that sold their products to Spain. That one didn't even have a license to sell those products. And the other thing is buying from a company is not the same thing as buying from China. These are companies with actual people working at them a CEO, an accountant, and some companies, Tim, do illegal things and then they get investigated and they get punished for those things. So let's hear Tim's reasoning on why China is doing this. Any of the supplies we have now that work came from China. So how is it that China is able to mass produce working equipment? They lie about what's going on, then start extracting much of, uh, much of that equipment back from these countries like Australia and Canada to China and then send out faulty equipment. This is such an elaborate and confusing conspiracy. It's actually hard to keep up. Are you saying that before 2020, China factories never had any quality issues? Are you sure about that, Tim? I mean, have you really researched that? Because something tells me that that's not exactly correct. And then you say extracting equipment. Uh, you mean buying equipment? just sounds like you're complaining about capitalism at this point. They bought supplies when they needed them. And now that they have a surplus, they're selling supplies. That's just standard capitalism. I don't understand what is your complaint. I would assume it is intentional. 
I would. You don't have to. Why would we, Tim? Why would we assume the most confusing, elaborate conspiracy theory with very little evidence based mostly on conjecture and assertions when the answer seems to be so much more obvious and standard? China launches a fake news campaign to blame the U.S. for coronavirus. ProPublica analyzed thousands of fake and hijacked Twitter accounts to understand how covert Chinese propaganda spreads around the globe. You know, Tim, I wonder if those are some of the same bots who have privately messaged me saying, dude, WTF, my Twitter account just magically got deleted and said I was a bot. Or maybe it's like those 90,000 bots that were removed from my YouTube subscriber account. You know, the ones who make comments and make videos about the fact that they've been removed and send me emails and talk to me in the street. You know, those fleshy Terminator-like bots. When China lies and actively sows disinformation, people lose their lives. The context that he's in is talking about apparently blaming America for the virus. I don't know why that would kill anybody or, or how that could cause any real harm. And I haven't seen him show us evidence of that. We know that the CDC has publicly stated that they misdiagnosed COVID patients as flu patients. When was that? How many? Where was it? Which hospitals? What were their names? Does asking those questions constitute a violent crime to you? Is that causing death? I don't really follow your logic here. When they send faulty medical equipment, people lose their lives. If they're sending out misinformation that gets people killed on purpose, then I can safely say China is trying to kill us and many others. And then I'm going to go ahead and assume that the, the equipment they're sending out is intentionally faulty because we used to buy our masks from them in the first place with no problems. So now we're reaching what appears to be the pinnacle of Tim's logic on China. Yes, Tim, China is trying to kill you because before this moment, there's never been any quality issues from any Chinese products. And now suddenly there are. And that means that they're trying to kill you. And my God, Tim, it's even worse than you thought. You know who else is trying to kill you? 3M. And 3M is an American company, so America is trying to kill you.